Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Welcome to the weekend, a big holiday weekend. And for that reason, we need to talk about the weather. Even though the storm chances are isolated and scattered, a lot of outdoor activities means you gotta pay attention to the weather. So make sure you stay weather aware this weekend for the potential for those strong storms. And we're gonna see some again today, but they'll be isolated. Now we had some overnight, second night in a row, we had a two to 3 a.m. wake up call with some isolated strong storms. Right now, what we're watching is to the west, we've got something we call an MCV. Now, that's just a fancy acronym we use for an old low pressure system that was formed by thunderstorms. If you want to know the technical term, it's a mesoscale convective vortex. That means it's a low pressure system that was formed by thunderstorms. So the thunderstorms themselves have actually helped create this. Now, this is diving to the southeast. So this is going into South Carolina. And with heating ahead of us, you know, we've got temperatures already in many locations. I'll throw them on real quickly. Generally running in the 70s. Dew points, real quickly, I'll show you those, are in the 60s to 70s. So there's really warm, humid air ahead of this, which will allow for storms to fire up this afternoon, especially in our South Carolina county. So in this area in particular is what I'm watching today. But even in the North Carolina counties, we'll see storms probably develop in the mountains this afternoon and then push south and east kind of your typical summer pattern but with this little added piece of energy some of these storms could be strong i'll quickly show you the severe weather outlook today you can see that low risk essentially right ahead of this M mcv that we call it moving into south carolina bigger risk in the middle of the country this would be significant a tornado outbreak there tomorrow this will be for sunday you can see the risk basically shifting into the midwest in the ohio valley that is potentially going to be some pretty nasty storms there let me quickly turn off the uh, lightning here just real quickly we'll turn off the lightning data so we don't have that on the screen but you can see that's going to be a big mess here for the midwest and then on monday for the carolinas uh, doesn't mean we won't see a, an isolated storm the next two days but monday in particular kind of honing in on that right now um, because the front itself, you can actually see the orientation of this front here, it's going to be pushing here. So by Monday, we're going to have that front pushing in with hot, humid air. So Monday's a day in particular, I'm watching for some strong storms. So let's get right to the future cast, kind of show you the sporadic nature of the storms, but also a better look at the timing of everything as we go through the weekend. So one word of caution, the way this atmosphere is set up this weekend, you need to check back with the weather frequently for where the storms are and where they're developing because you just can't check at the beginning of the weekend and go, I'm good. This is the kind of weekend like having the app and checking the radar hourly, especially if you're outdoors. That's kind of one of the, uh, one of the uh, you know, effects of doing any outdoor activity is you are required to check the weather more frequently. That's just par for the course. So you see the storms we have to the west to us right now. We'll go into the afternoon hours. You can see as it pushes east, it'll weaken, but new storms are likely going to develop and you see where they're going to develop. Now, will they develop exactly there? But somewhere in here, we're going to see scattered storms and they're going to move in this direction. So look at the timing, three o'clock. Sounds like a good time that I think the storms will fire up because that's kind of when the heating gets the maximized in the mountains and then into the evening hours moving into the Piedmont. So if we're going to see a storm this evening, it's in that I would say four, five, six time frame. You know, I think last couple of days I said across Charlotte area after four, pretty much every day. Um, those move through fairly quickly. So lightning's our biggest concern here. Could there be a warning or two? Sure. Anytime you get thunderstorms, you could get one or two warnings, but not expecting widespread severe weather set up today. We'll go into the overnight hours. Could we see another overnight storm? I wouldn't rule it out, but it looks a little less likely tonight. Maybe not making three nights in a row. Sunday is a little more interesting here. So I expect sunshine for most of the day. This is uh, by about 1.30 in the afternoon. Look at that big squall line. Uh, I've been watching Indy for the Indy 500. Oh, just not looking. <laughs> That's Boy, the double. Kyle Larson's going to have trouble getting back uh, from up there. So we'll go into the afternoon hours. Coke 600 down here. Really lots of sunshine, which is great, right? But that leads to a lot of heat and humidity, which inevitably we see some scattered storms. Now, where they develop, it's like watching water boil. Where are you gonna see the little bubbles on the bottom of the pot develop? We know they're gonna be there, but where are they gonna de develop? If they develop there, this could be a threat to the Coke 600 at some point, maybe six, seven, eight o'clock um, with lightning in the area. And that's our biggest concern and rain obviously, but lightning anywhere close by eight miles is gonna cause an issue. Um, so I do think there could be an isolated storm at some point during the race. Um, it pushes through, you know, hopefully quickly, the lightning threat goes away. But look at the bigger cluster developing Sunday night. And this is primarily because of what's coming out of the Midwest. And this is why I say check back. This could change every model run because the way what we call convection or mesoscale meteorology, where these individual storms develop changes the atmosphere. So when one storm develops here, it uses up energy and doesn't produce a storm here. 
If one storm doesn't develop there, then it develops somewhere else. So it, it really is a very changeable thing. We know the general areas, but the specific locations and timing, you got to check back for. So you see this, this is Sunday night. So um, pretty big cluster moving through. So the Coke 600, is it bears watching. Um, it, it, we're going to be racing at some point. The question is how long before we get a delay. And if we don't get the whole race in, you know, just got to get halfway, remember. Uh, you know, could we see storms develop later as we go into the overnight hour? So I'll back this up and we'll go through the day today. That's that cluster there. Overnight tonight, nothing most of Sunday. Dry, 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 dry. And then by maybe 7, 8 o'clock, I think 8, 8 o'clock might be the time frame. And then you see the big cluster developing going into uh, Monday morning. And Monday will be interesting, just a heads up. I think this will be wave one in the morning. Notice the time frame here, 2 a.m., but then there's going to be a secondary wave in the afternoon. So yeah, definitely a weekend. You want to pay attention to the weather, primarily because we're going to have scattered storms, but also because of all your outdoor activities. So one of the rules of thumb, if you're going to do outdoor activities, you got to stay weather aware and pay attention throughout the weekend.